We're live. What up, YouTube? Happy Saturday night. Texas Rob here. Yes, solo again. It's all right, though. I don't hate. No big deal. How are y'all doing? Hope everything's going all right. Tonight's edition, if I could zoom in and edit, you'd see it. I'd have it on a thumbnail, maybe. <laughs> I'll have it on the title, though. Uh, we're going to do Just La Do It. Mm. Y'all probably know who Chris La Do is, was. R.I.P. It's a good guy. Great cowboy. Great singer, songwriter, artist, performer. The whole gamut. All around cowboy. That's what you call it. Guy was great. All around cowboy. So, I don't know <clears throat> who started this venture, whether it was his son, Ned, or whether it started when Chris was still alive. Not sure. I don't really know the history on it. Uh, my buddy Art got these bottles for me. Appreciate it, Art. And so, I'm going to try them. Uh, a little iffy on the one bottle, but we'll see. I'll give it a shot. Oh, shit. Forgot the glass again. Come on. Come on, Texas Rob. Gosh darn it. Pull your head out of your rear end. I'll get a couple here. These are all 80 proof. We'll go over them here directly because I got a bonus bottle that's sort of from the region. So, Wyoming, you know, that's where Chris was from. Wyoming. So, uh, so let's see. This this is the iffy one right here, folks. I don't know. I'll go through it. What we got here, we have cinnamon, clove, honey flavored whiskey. Now, y'all know me. I like bourbon. I like it neat. In a glass, at room temp. No ice. That's just me. I just me. I Can I and have I mixed it before with stuff? Yeah, for sure. 100%. Do I much anymore? Probably not. No. So this is going to be different. Cinnamon, clove, honey flavored whiskey. I don't know. We'll see. We'll give it a shot. So I got this one. Now, but I have done a little research on this stuff. So what I can find on these two is I really can't find nothing on this. This is double cask blended bourbon whiskey finished in wine barrels. This is a straight whiskey finished in wine barrels now you know it says straight it's got to be at least two years old so we know that at least this this from what i found this is supposed to be a blend of indiana and kentucky bourbon no less than four years old so i can't wait to try this one i might save it for last to do the best for last i'd probably do that last so, I don't know about this one, but I'll try it for the show. I've got to do it for the show, right? I did open them. I haven't drank out of these at all. I've had them for a couple weeks now. Haven't tried them. I've been waiting to do a show on them. I mean, just alone, you can see the, the, the youth in them. I mean, the bourbon's a lot, a little darker. The straight whiskey's really light. It's almost like an Irish whiskey, and that's like, I can see tomorrow through that bottle. Yeah, that's, we'll see, we'll see. So, uh, this one is the, I got my water here, so let me, let me get my water open just in case I need to get a good drink here. Cause I'm just not sure about this one. But we're gonna give it a try. Cause I told her I'd do it. So, <clears throat> here we go. Oh, this does not smell good at all. <laughs> Sorry. I don't, I just, I don't know that I mind the cinnamon and honey, but the clove is like really super throwing me off right now. Oh yeah, there's no, I mean, I don't know, folks. <laughs> I'm going to try it. But... I 
It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Wow, I'm so surprised. It's definitely taste the honey and the cinnamon. Wow. It, it, yeah, no, it's good. It does not smell good, but it does not taste bad. It For a mixer, 100%. Mix your ass off with it. I don't mind that at all. For a mixer. It's really sweet, though. I mean, like, it's, like, super sweet, so mix it with something. But it's not, it's not that bad. It has a different taste to it. It's not what I'm used to, you know, as far as just drinking straight bourbon. But, uh, it's not bad. It's very, the, the, you can totally separate the tastes, the different tastes, the, and I get more, I get a little, just a tiny, it's a day, and you know, this would be one of those things where mix it with some hot water if you're feeling a hot toddy and you need to kind of loosen, but it needs to be a little bit higher proof for that maybe, but. The finish is sweet. It's not bad. There's no nothing up front. It goes right over the tongue, and it all goes to the finish. There's no forward. There's no middle. There's it's all finished. But it's you can definitely taste. I think the most I taste is the honey and the cinnamon's right there. The honey and the clove. But it's not a bad. It's not a very overpowering clove at all. It's it's pretty. It's very i'm very surprised that i don't mind that at all i really am because i thought going into this i'm like man i'm not gonna like that but no it's 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 not bad it, it's not bad it's not bad i gotta say it's not bad that's it. Not bad. Let's go to the. We're gonna do the bourbon last. So this is the blended bourbon. That's last. That's hopefully that's a number one. This is the double cask, straight whiskey finished in wine barrels. And from what I saw, this is supposed to be no less than four years old. Also, blend. But I don't know. Maybe no. It's Kentucky. I'm trying to remember what I read, folks. Sorry. But if you know about it, then you know about it. If you don't, Google it. I think they all had five stars or 4.9 or 4.8 or something like that. So, I mean, it wasn't no slouchy stuff as according to the Google reviews. You know, and then obviously somebody's going to say, oh, well, maybe go back to it or whatever. You got a neck pull or whatever. You know, I don't know. There's not much of a neck there to pour out of. But, um, you know, I, I think you can get some air to it or whatever but this is the just do it now and then from what i read so they already have wine like just do it has wine so that's the barrels they use to age the or to finish the bourbon the whiskey in is their wine barrels i mean i don't know if i'm wrong correct me please That's really super light. When you spin it, it almost becomes white, like transparent. Like, and then it goes back to light, or very, very, excuse me, very light amber color, or yeah. It's like, if you could see this right here, when I spin it, it's like, almost looks like white dog. Ooh. Definitely, wow. I didn't think this one was going to be good either because I thought it was just going to be the smell. Well, I, I say that, but the nose is tricking me maybe because the nose tricked me on that one, you little devil. It smells really... It's like a... It smells like a very mature bourbon or a very mature whiskey. Really smooth, sweet like full of sugar right on the nose like right up front it's like really super white sugar front on the nose like cotton candy that's what I'm, I'm smelling cotton candy in here like that smell 
when you're at a cotton candy machine, that really heavy sugar smell, that's what I'm smelling. With a little bit, a little bit of, I don't want to say ethanol like it's burning my nose because it's not at all, <clears throat> but it's, but you can smell that ethanol. It's like cotton candy and it's like a bourbon flavored cotton or a cotton candy bourbon, something like that. That's what I'm smelling. But yeah, super, super sugar strong up front. And that's about, that's about all I get. I'm not getting... I'm not getting much of nothing else. Let's give it a shot. Hmm. It's definitely, definitely tastes older than two years. It doesn't have that a uh, little wang to it like a two-year-old does two-year-old bourbon uh, it's not real leggy but man I can't get that flavor I can't tell you what that is at all I have no idea it's like It's really light, really light. It's got a very light mouth feel. It's a, uh, it's super light. It's like nothing, but it's not bad. I mean, it's not bad. You could put this in a decanter and trick your friends and you know tell them to tell you which what it is. And it's so many things going around, they wouldn't know. It's not bad. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disappointed at all. It's not bad. Watch, I'll be disappointed in the one that I want to look forward to the most. Hopefully not. Cross, knock on wood, cross fingers, yeah, yeah. Because that one's surprisingly all right. But now here comes an aftertaste. Hold on. Man, it's like trying to be so complex, but... I don't know. It's different. It's not different in a bad way. It's different in, it's not like all my other bottles. So it's like, I don't know, man. What is that? Smell hasn't changed. I mean, it's really light. Maybe I can taste a little bit, a little bit of oak, a little bit of wood from a barrel or something of some sorts, but not much, not much. It's very, it's very complex, but very simple, all on the same. Just trust me on that. It's very, it's very different. It's, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to think about it. It's, it's good though. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's good. Now, hopefully, this one does not disappoint because I do not want to be upset. Cause I did smell them a while ago when I opened them, and uh, wait, no, no, I smelled them a while ago when I opened them, and this one didn't smell worth a damn. This one was eh, and this one I was like, oh, I can't wait. So let's see if hopefully the roles aren't reversed here. And I don't know why they have different colored caps. I don't know. We'll see. All right, so this is the batch 15, bottle number 165, double cask blended bourbon whiskey, 
finishing wine barrels. And according to what I saw on Google, this is supposed to be no less than four-year-old mix of Indiana and Kentucky bourbon blended. We'll see. And if I'm wrong, correct me, please. But that's just what I found when I was researching. This one smells younger than that one for some reason. Same thing, I can just about twirl it clear. Well, maybe it's coming around now, I don't know. Oak. Corn. Definitely some corn. Yeah, it's really, it's really, I uh, wonder what the char level was. Seems to me like the char level probably was like a one or an A, whatever you want to call it, but like 15 seconds, because it doesn't seem like, I, unless the wine finishing in a wine barrel takes that much out of it, I don't think it does, but I don't know. I'm not an expert on, you know, cooperage and cooperage and stuff like that, so. That's all I'm getting though is maybe a tad bit of sweetness, but more corn. It's more corn and oak than anything. So it's like a hominy barrel or something. <laughs> Not hominy, but you know. <clears throat> Swallowed wrong. <coughs> Excuse me. I gotta go in after that again because I swallowed wrong and it kind of hit me weird. Oh. I wonder. It's really light though. It's like. Like as soon as it hits your tongue, it's almost like water in a sense of there's no pepper. That you would get from like a good, uh, a good strong proof bourbon. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Still corn and oak. I'm trying to chew it to get whatever I can out of it. It's, that one has a little, like the tiniest bit of pepper on it, uh, out of all of them. Uh, I can definitely taste the corn and the oak in that one. Nothing else really, there's no, I don't get any caramel, I don't get any vanilla, I don't get any brown sugar. I just get corn and oak. It's like I'm eating a barrel of corn on the cob with a oak stave for a side dish. That's what I'm getting when I taste this. Now, will it open up? I don't know. I mean, we'll see. Down the road a piece next time I try it. But, so although I'm not 100% let down, I don't know. This is an interesting lineup. It's totally different. It seems like it's coming from a winemaker's perspective or whatever, uh, with not a lot of thought on the bourbon end of it. So, especially with Chris Ledoux, with uh, but you know, it is what it is. It's their offering, and I'll try it. I'll give it my honest opinion and. Going down the road. I mean, it's 
it definitely feels like it's or tastes like it's older than like it's supposed to be a four year old uh, blend like they said so I'll give them that I thought it was gonna be super way young and not worth a damn like some of the other stuff I have uh, so I think these are a win I think they're good uh, this one I thought was gonna be my least favorite is not is not that bad it's really not this one is probably honestly if I had to if I had to put them in order and taste I'd almost have to go this one this one and this one just because the only thing I get out of this is corn and, and wood this one I at least I get that cotton candy and that sugar heavy smell and that taste and then this one you know it's I can get that that cinnamon just pops right in there with that honey and that one's good so I mean if I have to put them in order I'm gonna go uh, I'll probably have to just go like I, like what I didn't want to do but I'm gonna do anyway honestly that one that one and that one the whiskey flavored one and the bourbon after that I mean honestly that's those are pretty good ones. I mean, they're it's a good offering. Good, good job there, uh, Ned, or whoever oversees it. And it's Wyoming inspired because that's where Chris is from, and you know he's Wyoming cowboy and everything like that. So I like that part of it. It's pretty good, you know. Yeah, that's that's crazy. The whiskey. That's nuts. But we're not done yet. I got a surprise bottle. It's kind of from the same region. I picked it because it's along the same lines as the flavored stuff. Uh, my brother and sister-in-law got it for me when they were up in Montana. I don't think it's ever been on the show before. And it's 80 proof also. And it is called fireweed it is bourbon whiskey with cherry brandy liqueur is what it is so yeah we're not it's kind of a different night tonight so fireweed i'll read this real quick fireweed is a perennial flower that is often the first to grow in areas ravaged by fires lending its beauty to the charred fallows so is our fireweed bourbon whiskey with cherry brandy liqueur a rugged bourbon from america's heartland Barreled in charred oak, barreled in charred oak, and lent a subtle sweetness from a Montana cherry brandy that we distill from sun-kissed cherries grown on the hills overlooking Flathead Lake. It's a blend of the old and new, the savory and the sweet, of the strength of the beauty of our lands. So this is from Glacier Distilling in Corum, Montana. Uh, my brother and sister-in-law they were up there a few years ago, and they stopped by and. They, they, I think they just sent me a picture of it or they said, hey, we're going to grab this bottle. I'm like, sweet, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll try it. And it's different. It's something to have in the, in the cabinet. I don't think you're going to get this around here at all because I don't think they have any distro around here. But, you know, I like it. It's kind of got a red tinge to it. You can't really see it because of the bottle, but it's got red because of that cherry liqueur. Last time I tried this, I thought it was pretty decent. I was like, man, that ain't bad. You know, something different. It's just a little, it's a little mix. And since we're mixing tonight, you know, see, it's totally red. You can't really see that, but if you can, it's got that red tinge to it. I haven't had this in a hot minute, so it's just been sitting there under there. But if you live up in Montana, uh, drop us a comment about it. It smells super young. It's really, it's really cherry forward. I mean, obviously because it's gonna have that cherry liqueur in it. But supposedly these like cherries are like grown up there, and they're like supposed to be just like ginormous. And supposedly there's five pounds worth of. Uh, I used to have the car, and I don't, I don't know where it is. Supposedly there's like five pounds worth of cherry mashed up or something to put in this. I I think that's what it said. Uh, either way, I mean, it, I thought it was pretty cool. It's a different bottle to have. It is bourbon, but it's flavored bourbon. 
you know. But yeah, really, oak and cherry is about what I can smell on this. Really getting a strong smack in the face from that barrel stave. And then that cherry comes in and sweetens it on top and says, it's all right, it don't hurt. That's probably been about a year and a half or so since I've had this. Yeah, cherry, oak, <laughs> corn, oak, cherry, oak. That's pretty much it. Look, we had dinner and we're having dessert. <laughs> yeah, this is, it's, it's all cherry. And obviously it's gonna be cherry because it's 80 proof and they mix it with the cherry liqueur. But I just figured I'd throw this in because these guys are the Wyoming guys, Crystal Dew and everything. But well, hell, Montana, your neighbor, you know, just as well throw your neighbor in the mix there. So I was like, yeah, I'll do that. Throw that in there. And I do have some little bitty 375s of some of their other offerings, but I didn't grab those. Uh, one's a rock rye or something like that. I forget, but uh, if you've ever had uh, fireweed from a glacier, leave in the comment. Let me know. But uh, Corum, Montana, that's where they're out of. Uh, I've never been up there. My they, they my brother and sister-in-law went up there, but yeah, yeah. It's like it's like you put a cherry pie in an oak barrel and let it sit for a few years, and now you're eating a cherry pie, and it tastes like cherries with a lot of oak barrel in it. That's basically what it is. Yeah. Not bad. It's different. I mean, it's cherry brand bourbon. But. Yeah. These, this, this, this. That's crazy. Totally, totally blew, blew my mind there. Did not think it was going like that. Did not, so. Alrighty, well, I hope I wasn't too boring for you. Appreciate you watching. Uh, if I earned it, give me a thumbs up, please. Uh, I will, uh, that's the law on this, or the outcome on this one. <clears throat> yeah. We've got Wyoming and Montana, so. Uh, just to do it. I think uh, I think it's all right. I think it's good. It could age a little longer. Maybe put a little bit more emphasis in in the uh, bourbon part of it. If you want to capture that crowd, uh, I think if you did that. I mean, I think if that were to happen, it'd be you know it's a great audience to capture the bourbon crowd. Uh, you know, cowboys, whiskey. That kind of thing, you know. Uh, of course, you got to have your flavored stuff, which is fine. I don't, you know, Wild Turkey does that, and Jim Beam does that. Most of uh, all your, uh, some, I won't say most, a lot of the big name bourbon guys do the flavored stuff, and that's fine, whatever. You know, you got to market to that. If you want to make sales, you got to make sales, and that's how you do it. You market to that niche, that little, uh, what people like, do it, and then just keep your, honest stuff good though so I think uh, I think uh, just to do it if you want to uh, capture that bourbon crowd like guys like me who just want to drink it neat at room temp but want to have a good bottle you know I, I don't know what my buddy paid for these didn't ask he didn't offer it I I didn't you know it's rude to ask in my opinion but uh, I'd pay I'd pay a good amount of money for a good, nice bottle with some age on it and some character in it. So, just saying. But other than that, that's it tonight. Appreciate it again. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, try to search, search it out and, and get a bottle and see if you like it. If not, 
then I'm glad I at least gave you a little bit of advice. So, all right, I'll see y'all later.